every three or four years, the OECD would organise a conference on terrorism um, and uh, pull together the pools as many as they could, plus a variety of other speakers. And we found those extremely interesting and, and useful. The problem was they were every three or four years. Um, and so in 2015, I think Pool Re really is the largest of the pools uh, from around the world, took it upon itself um, to organize a conference in October of 2015. Uh, we pulled together 14 catastrophe pools, terrorism pools from around the world uh, to a conference in the UK and it was extremely successful. We were able to, um, I think, compare notes on a lot of things that were happening at the time uh, that impacted us all, uh, relationships with government, relationships with the security services and the changing nature of terrorism, insurance and reinsurance. Um, that was followed up by a very successful conference in Canberra in October 2016 um, where the IFTRIP, the International Federation of Terrorism Reinsurance Pools uh, charter if you like was signed uh, by all of those pools uh, and that then led to the first presidency if you like of the organisation uh, which has been held by France uh, and which will result in a conference in Paris. Quite apart from the current straight state of the terror threat, uh, and we'll have speakers from uh, NATO, uh, from the French security services, we'll have the British uh, defence attaché based in Paris uh, talking, as well as our own uh, Ed Butler, the head of our Terrorism Research and Analysis Centre. Um, it will look at the evolving nature of the threat. So I think cyber terrorism will once again be right up there as to what is actually possible. How can you, is it possible to, and if so, how, and what kind of damage can you cause via remote digital interference? And what roles should state pools uh, be playing in that? And how do you fill a market gap if the market isn't gonna write that risk itself? gap is now common to all of us. Uh, cyber terrorism is something which I think we're all looking at and wondering how we can provide that cover. Uh, but also um, the whole issue of um, uh, non-damage business interruption in particular, which has emerged not only as a result of the recent attacks in, in the UK, but also as obvious after uh, the attacks in Nice in France the compensation schemes that governments are providing and whether or not those are insurable perils that could be taken off of the government's balance sheet and put into the private market I think is another source of discussion which I think is occurring around the world um, not only in terrorism as it happens but I think in other areas like climate change mass migration pandemic these are all issues uh, that governments are thinking well is this something that we can take off of our agenda and put into the private markets and then I would think also the kind of risk sharing that can be achieved. You know, traditional reinsurance, uh, you'll have some of the major reinsurers there, uh, but are they becoming maxed out? Have they taken as much of this risk as they're prepared to take? And are the capital markets, for example, prepared to put uh, some of their money towards uh, taking this risk uh, out of the schemes and into the private market? This is a, a nascent organisation. Uh, it's the first time that you've had formal collaboration. Um, but I think if you were to look into a crystal ball, the terrorism threat is only going to evolve. Uh, the coverage that we're all being asked to provide is only going to evolve. But actually, you could foresee a situation in the future where um, there may be a risk sharing mechanism. And, and you've seen the prevalence of, uh, of ILS, insurance linked securities. Uh, is there a possibility for the terrorism pools to come together and actually purchase uh, an insurance linked security from the capital markets in common? Um, now, that's a big leap uh, and it requires all sorts of types of collaboration, but why not?